Hello, it's great to be back with a new season of Interviews for Trends. And for this series, we're at the fabulous The CM Hotel at Bangkok's Riverside. What an amazing venue to film at. We're at the library. I'm with Nick Downing, General Manager of The CM, and you are watching Trends. Nick, we're filming at the fabulous The CM. Thank you so much for uh, providing the venue for us today here at the library. Tell us about the hotel. Well, first of all, thank you for choosing The CM for this series. We're honoured to have you here. The hotel's very unique. We're only 38 rooms, 28 suites and 10 pool villas. We're in the Royal District of Doucet, which in its own way is completely unique at this level. And we're right on the river. Um, and we have so many amazing little hidden gems around the hotel, uh, little spaces to explore and see. And of course, we're owned by the Sukasol family. So, um, you know, they've been instrumental in creating, you know, what really is an international gem of a hotel here in Bangkok. How did you go about creating this experience? Because I know that the family owned the land and then there was the idea to build the hotel. Who was the architect? Who was the creative driving force behind the CM? Sure. Well, as you mentioned, the family had the, the land for decades yeah. and it sat, sat empty for a while. And I think it was Kunoi Krasada, uh, the, the son, who's the movie star rock musician of the family. Um, and he had the idea of creating a, a, a small boutique hotel. And to be fair, it wasn't originally envisaged that it would be the way it is today. I think that happened when Bill Bensley was engaged as the architect. And, you know, obviously Bill's created quite a unique uh, property here. And I think that's, that was really it. I think there were a number of parties that were involved that created the Siam and it's not down to one person or, or one vision. It was, it sort of evolved over a period of time and became what it is today. You've won many awards. What's the, your secret recipe or your approach, marketing, guest experience that you have at the CM that distinguishes you from other ultra luxury hotels? Why are you winning awards? What are you offering guests? Look, I, I mean, awards, you take them when they're great and you, you know, you obviously discount them when you don't get them. No, I'm joking. Um, it's more a case of, you know, what stands out, as you say. For us, I've, I've, I have a phrase that my team have heard me say many times, which is, it's easy to build a beautiful hotel. Uh, all it takes is money and as an architect and a vision. But it's really the people that bring it to life. And I think that's what I'm very proud of here, that we've managed to create a culture that matches the beauty of the hotel. And we, at 38 rooms, nobody else is able to really create that sort of culture. When you have 38 rooms and you have the amount of team members that we do, you can create a personalization that's unlike any other hotel, like a 300, 400 room, you know, city centre hotel. So I think that's where we've created our niche and we're very proud of that. And, you know, many of our guests when they're leaving, you know, wish that they'd stayed longer, but also feel like, you know, they have stayed longer. They feel connected to the people. And I think, you know, it really is the team that have brought the, the awards, I think, in addition to the, to the, uh, the structure. The ambience is incredible, but where are we in Bangkok? Well, I think that's always, that's always the discussion point when it comes to the Siam. It's like, you know, people will say, oh, no, it's too far. You know, it's not in the middle of town. But you've got a river just down there. Exactly. And, and for us, the secret is the boat. You know, we, we have our own uh, water boat, um, limousine. So you're on the Chao Praia. We are. We're literally on the Chao Praia. And basically, our boat runs eight times a day for our guests to go all the way down. We're 10 minutes, 15 minutes from the Grand Palace, past Wadarun, Chinatown Flower Market. And then we go all the way down to Icon Siam, which is about 25 minutes away. And then we go a little bit further down to Taxan Pier. And our guests can jump on or off uh, with the help of their butler. And basically that's the link for us. So, you know, if you're in another big city and you're going out somewhere, it's gonna take you half an hour in a taxi. I'd rather be half an hour on a boat than half an hour in a taxi. So it's, it's part of the experience. It's how we bring Bangkok into the experience here. And you see people come back at the end of the day and they get off the boat and they just, Oh, I'm back here at the CM, and that's the beauty of our location. It's a very competitive market, the luxury hotel market in Bangkok, a lot of competition. How does the CM stand out? Look, I think, you know, we've created a niche. Uh, again, comes back to the size and our location. 
you know, with only 38 rooms, it is automatically a much more exclusive experience. People are often wandering around after breakfast. We have all these incredible spaces. So you're sitting here in the beautiful library. We have a private cinema just behind here. We have a vinyl room up on the second floor. You play old records. Uh, we have a, an incredible spa downstairs. Even have a tattoo studio where you can get the traditional Thai Sakyan tattoos. Um, so there's just so many different spaces. And I think that's really, again, it creates a different ambience. It's not, this is not a hotel of just checking in and checking out and doing some tours in between. This is an experience that you check in or you arrive and frankly, you don't want to leave. You know, you want to spend time in the hotel. What about my favorite topic, food? What, <laughs> what dining options are there at the hotel? Well, we've, we've been most well known for Chon, which is our Thai restaurant, beautiful century old houses down by the Chow Pai area. And uh, we serve breakfast down there, which is all a la carte. Uh, and then that becomes our um, lunch and dinner Thai restaurant. But before COVID, we did a renovation of our front building and our cafe char. And basically we ended up changing the direction after COVID. We wanted to appeal more to the locals here in Bangkok. And we decided to create a new concept. We brought back Blair Matheson, the chef who had opened the hotel, New Zealand background. He'd opened some great restaurants downtown. And I asked him to create another vision of, of, of that. So now we have the Story House, which is at the other end of the property, very contemporary, more comfort food type of direction. And uh, we've actually just started doing Sunday brunch with live jazz. And that's, you know, we haven't even advertised it. It's already growing by word of mouth. And we've done a really great concept there where it's all, again, a la carte as much as you want rather than a big, huge buffet. So I could stay at the hotel three days, weekday or weekend, and I wouldn't necessarily need to leave. Everything's here and I could have a variety of dining options without stepping outside the hotel then. A hundred percent. But the great thing again is, you know, we have our little recommends book. We have all these great restaurants around that we send people out on the boat and they'll have a great time as well. So, you know, everything from local, little one, five minutes down the road to Michelin star dining. So Bangkok, you don't, while I'm very proud of what we have, the great thing is we're so close to so many other dining options as well. And Bangkok is, you know, it's a dining destination of the world at the moment. Is there a, the Siam guest, millennial or an oldie like me, or who's staying? First of all, I don't consider you old, <laughs> but no, I think that's the other beauty of it. Um, it's not so much who they are, it's what they're looking for. And I think what I love, you go down to Chon in the morning and look around the restaurant in the morning and there's people from around the world. There's Asian, there's American, there's UK, there's Australians. Um, you know, it's such a diverse mix and there's everything from multi-generational families, gay, straight, everybody. It's, I, I love the fact that it just is this melting pot of cultures, but also of ages. It's not just, you know, the young girls taking photos. It's also the people who are just enjoying their own space and doing their own thing. So, you know, I think that's the thing. We've created a stage for people to come and enjoy a, a certain type of experience in Bangkok, and it doesn't really matter who you are or where you're from. So that's the beauty. You're part of a family enterprise of hoteliers within the Sukhasong Group, family run. Is that a blessing or a challenge? Would, would you like to be part of a chain and a conglomerate globally supporting you? Or do you have benefits by being family run? So I, I've had experience in both. Um, and without a doubt, there's benefits and, and uh, pros to both. But I love what we have here. I mean, I've been here almost eight years. Uh, and that is primarily down to working with the Sukhasol family. Mm. Um, and my team here. I think it's all about the people. And, you know, the, the beauty of it is that being part of a family run, independent hotel, we can pivot like this. So if we need to do something, it's not a matter of going through corporate approvals and things. It's like, okay, let's do it. Let's do this. Let's do that. And all of the concepts every year, we keep changing and evolving. Okay. Um, you know, the renovations that I've mentioned earlier, the new restaurants, you know, we're about to do a big renovation project of this very building with our 28 suites. And, you know, we, that's starting in a matter of weeks. And if we were part of a bigger group, we would have had to have planned that two years in advance. Whereas, you know, we sit down with the Sukhasol family a few months ago and it was like, okay, we have this option or that option. So, okay, let's do it. And I think that's the beauty of it. Um, you know, we're able to react, we're able to perform. Um, we're such a unique property that from a sales and marketing perspective, we are affiliated where we need to be affiliated and we have the avenues to create business. I think I know the answer to this question, <laughs> but I'm going to ask it. 
do arts and entertainment impact the DNA of the hotel? Is it part of the CM, arts and entertainment? I mean, it, it almost wouldn't exist without it. I mean, obviously the Sukhothol family are very involved. Um, you know, every corner of this property is Kunnoi and Kunkamala. You have some of Kunkamala's priceless artworks behind us, but you know, every little nook and cranny, there's, and it's personally curated by Kunnoi. So every single thing, he knows he has a photographic memory of every single corner. And if we move something, he'll politely remind us, oh, where did that go? So, you know, I think it is. And I think the music side of it, um, you know, is so critical to us as well. I think it's, it's just part of that whole thing. But, you know, with plans for another project in the future, which we'll announce soon, again, the DNA, the core, it, it, it's what is Kunoi going to put there. And the rest of it almost revolves around it. And the other thing, just very quickly, that I would say is it works so well here because Bensley also has the same look and feel. Yes. He loves to recycle, reuse. It's not about, you know, mass producing tables. You know, the fact that you have something like this, Kunoi or uh, Bill would choose the same table. And I think that's why it works so well here. It's such a collaboration. Sustainability? Well, I mean, and Marissa, um, obviously, one of our, you know, owning family, uh, she considers herself a sustainability champion. And so that's something that's very dear and near to us. Uh, and so we look at everything. Yeah, I like it because looking over there, you've got the water yeah. bottles, which are glass. Yeah. Hallelujah. Pre-COVID, we bought in uh, these aluminium water cans that we give to every guest. It's okay. a takeaway. And it's part of a refill, not landfill um, program that we are trying to see if we can develop further where you have a QR code on the back of it and it will highlight places that you can take to refill. And we want to try and expand that throughout the river and beyond. Allocation of uh, places along the river that are happy to refill water bottles. What's the biggest nationality staying here? Is there a specific country that's feeding you a lot of business or is it a general mix? Again, it's, it's quite varied. Uh, our number one market since day one has been the US, um, you know, over the year. The Chinese market obviously grew. We had something that went viral in China and we went from 1% of our business to almost taking over the US market, uh, the power of social media. Um, but outside of that, you know, if I look at our top 10, you'll have, you know, South Korea, you'll have Australia, you'll have UK. It's very mixed. And again, different times of the year, it's stronger in others. Finally, I have to ask this. What's your favorite place in the hotel? Oh, gosh. Actually, you know, I love the morning. Well, I, I'm an early riser and I love coming down here in the morning and coming to the riverside and just seeing how peaceful it is by the river. That's, that's probably the thing where I feel most at home. But I must admit, Kunoi has created a new little bar at the Story House restaurant, which if you haven't seen, you have to go see. He's only created it. And I just love the vibe in there. I love sitting in the big red chairs and just, it, it's just a great little corner of the hotel. Fantastic. What, what you've created here and what you're offering guests is incomparable to any other luxury hotel in Bangkok or probably in Asia. Such a unique experience. Thank you so much for letting us film here today, Nick. It's been an absolute pleasure. And thank you for watching this latest episode of Trends. See you next Friday.